Hi, in this lecture, we're going to have a look at the drum bus audio effect. So I've just got a drum track here. And let's just drag on a drum bus onto this drum track. Let's just hear what this sounds like without the drum bus. And then let's hear what it sounds like with the default drum bus. So here is the drum track. And here it is with the drum bus. You can hear straight away it gives it some body or punch. So the drum bus is meant to emulate an analog style drum processor. So it's designed really to add some warmth or some body to your drums. So we have a few different functions over here. I'm going to explain what all of these actually do. So the first one you'll notice is drive. So this quite simply will add some drive, so add some distortion or crunch to your drums. And then below this we have three different types of drive, soft, medium and hard. So let's hear what the three different types of drive actually sound like to this drum track. So this is soft, obviously if we increase the drive. Medium. And then hard. You can hear hard actually adds a lot of low end as well. So let's just get the EQ8 and just drag it on here as well. So this is hard, you can see there's a lot of low end. And if we swap it to soft. So this type of distortion or drive is called wave shaping distortion. It's called this because it will actually change the waves, it changes the shape of your sound. Okay, going down we have trim. So what this will do, this will allow us to trim the input. So if we don't want it to drive or push so hard, we can trim the input. So you'll notice we can't actually drag upwards, we can only drag down. So you notice it will obviously get quieter, we'll trim the gain. And if we double click, it will go back to zero. Then we have compressor. This is a very basic compressor, it's just a one button. So this is designed to give extra attack and give a bit more body to your drums too. And without compressor, you can hear instantly it gives that body and gives that depth to your drum sound. So going along we have crunch. This will add some more mids and highs to your drum sound. You can hear that crunchy sound on the snare. And below this we have damp. So what damp will do, it will take away some of the higher frequencies. So it's similar to a low pass filter for our distortion. So with the crunch, it can get a little bit too harsh with those mids and highs. So we can kind of filter out or damp out some of those highs with the damp. Obviously, if we have it all the way here, it sounds quite muddy. We can find a nice sweet spot around about eight or so. So we can filter out some of these sounds that might be a little bit too harsh. Okay, going down we have transients. This is an interesting feature in the drum bus. So this allows you to actually emphasize the transients. So these are the initial hits of the drums. So they'll punch through your mix a little bit more. And if we move this to the left, this will actually take away the decay of the drums. So it makes everything sound a bit sharper or a bit snappier. If you compare this to in the middle. So a lot snappier drums really. And if we move this to the right it will still emphasize the transients. However we get a bit more body to our drums. So this is nice if you're using real drums that are recorded in a real sound and you want to add a bit of body. This transient feature is useful for this. So this compared to, so it can add a bit more body. Okay, going along, up at the top, we have boom. So when we turn on boom, we're actually adding musical notes to our drums. Obviously this is quite an extreme example because it's on 100%. 
we could actually choose the notes we want, the frequency here. And you'll notice it will tell you the notes with this button here. This might be a little bit too high for tuning drums. This can be useful for tuning your kick drum. You can see here it says E0, and if we click it, it will tune to E0. I'd normally tune to the key of your track, or maybe even the fifth. And if we click this, this will tune to G0. Okay, we also have decay. This decay control will determine how long this bass note or boom note will actually last for. So if we have a short decay sound, the boom sound will not last very long. And if we have a longer decay sound, the boom sound will last a lot longer. We also have this little headphone icon. So this actually allows us to audition the actual bass frequencies here. So if we want to tune the bass frequencies or we want to hear the notes from this boom dial, just make sure you select this headphone icon and it will just isolate these. Okay, then we have a dry wet amount. So this might be useful if you want to get a blend between your dry signal and your wet signal. So your signal without the drum bus and with the drum bus. And then of course we have the outputs if you want to increase or decrease the output gain. So that's it, that's the drum bus. It's a useful tool for making your drums sound more powerful and have more warmth. And it also can give your drums that analog character.